Hello, and welcome back to part two in Gatsby and Elementor together at last. The duo that nobody asked for, but here we are. Uh, so here is where we left off. We just have two images that we got onto the page, and there's a big problem with these images. When we uploaded them, we uploaded them full size from Un Unsplash, and they are like three to six megs each. They are enormous images. And when we uh, refresh the page, let me just make sure that my caching is disabled. If we just look, I mean, visually, it's taking an extremely long time to download these images. So that's not something that we want. And in this video, I'm aiming to fix that. So remember, if you are new here to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell, if you want to get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's start off by just giving ourselves a quick recap of where we left off. So we took a WP GraphQL and we extended it to give us Elementor data, which we then picked up right here. And then we passed it in, through our context to our Gatsby pages. So we picked up that data here, we turned it back into JSON, and then we looped over it uh, to get our rows, our columns, and then our widgets. So then once we got to a specific widget, specifically image, we just took the URL that Elementor gave us and we just slapped it right in there. So the problem with that obviously is that our images are gonna be gigantic if you upload a gigantic image and we're not getting some of the benefits that Gatsby offers, like image optimization. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through quickly a solution that I came up with that will help uh, alleviate that. So we're gonna be tapping into the Gatsby lifecycle and then intercepting that Elementor data uh, before it reaches our page. And we're gonna modify it, and then we are going to then spit out a nice image tag that has an optimized version of that image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse this and I am going to take this enormous function that I created and just slap it in here and then explain it kind of a, a bit by bit. So as I scroll back up to the top, we see that I am on the on create node step in the life cycle. So this step happens a lot. So every time a node is created, this thing fires. And so we are grabbing the node that we're in and some actions, as well as store and cache, which just kind of we use but we don't use, and then reporter as well. But we are also using create node ID. Uh, once we have those, we are then destructuring actions and we're giving ourselves, oh, we can actually combine these. I'm just noticing this now. Uh, we are getting create node, delete page, and create page. So we're going to uh, use all three of these throughout the process. Um, and I'll kind of show you a little bit more as we go further. But like I said, once we start looping over all these nodes, uh, we need to make sure that we're on the right node. And so you can check to make sure that you're on the right node by doing this if statement here, making sure that we're on a type of site page. And if we're on that site page, we can have access to that context. So when we were creating uh, pages up here, we were passing Elementor data to our context right here. So we can just make sure that we are on a page that has Elementor data by simply checking to make sure it has Elementor data like this. Next, we are checking to see if this context has been modified. And that's something that we are setting up ourselves that I will explain in a little bit. And we're doing essentially the same thing that we did on the blog post. We are taking that Elementor data and we are looping over the rows, the columns, and then the widgets to uh, eventually get to those images. So that's essentially what we're doing here. We are making an async function that is looping over our rows, columns, and widgets. And once we get to that widget, we are um, making sure that it's an image. And then we are getting uh, the file node, or we're creating a file node. So because Elementor is giving us a full source URL for these images, we wanna download that image and get it into Gatsby, right? So we are also grabbing a create remote file node from Gatsby. So that's the um, inside of the Gatsby source file system plugin. We are grabbing create remote file node. 
And then we are taking that full source URL and we're throwing it in there and saying, please download this for us. And then assign it to the node that we're in and give it a nice little name that we can recognize it by. Once we've done that, we need to generate an image off of that. So the create remote file node isn't actually, you know, giving us something that we can use. It's creating a node inside of Gatsby that we can then use to create something that we can use. So hopefully that makes sense, but we're going to generate that image with a function uh, called generate image that I'll show you here in a second. And then um, we are taking that generated image and then putting it back into our element or context. So widget settings image, and then we're making something new called tag. So it should look pretty familiar. We're doing settings image URL. So right next to URL, we should have something called tag that we can eventually use. So generating that image is, uh, was probably the most difficult part because I didn't really know what I was doing in here. Uh, but luckily there's a um, plugin out there that was uh, um, adding inline or taking inline images inside of WordPress content and then generating uh, Gatsby friendly images off of it. So I was able to borrow some pieces there. I'll put a link to the repository below um, and just giving them a quick shout out because I borrowed quite a bit from here. So inside of generate image, uh, we are taking that file node that we just got from create remote file node, and we are running it through Gatsby plugin sharp, right? So we're taking fluid just because that's what we want. And we are using that function to generate an image off of it. We're make getting uh, the WebP format because that's just what I want as well and we are constructing a new image off of that. We're taking a Gatsby image and we're taking the default version of that image and we are throwing in our options on top of it. So we have our image that we have then run through Fluid and then we are adding it to a Gatsby image and then we are taking that React element and turning it back into a string so we can put it back in that object. So that whole process is giving us something that we can then put into widget.settings.image.tag. So we can just throw this right into our React component. And then after that, once we've actually done that, we need to create our page. If you noticed, I scrolled past something up here at the very top. Once we figured out that we were on an Elementor page, we deleted the page. And it's just kind of funny how it works that you have to delete a page and then create a new page with the modified data versus just modifying the existing page, but that's just how it worked. Um, so once we've downloaded the images and got everything the way that we want it, we create a new page just like we would um, in the life cycle up here. If we go back to the top and do create pages, we're using create page here. And so we're mimicking that same thing all the way down here. However, uh, we have modified data. So that modified data that we just uh, created inside of that loop is now slapped into here that we can then pick up on our actual blog post. So now that we have that, I know it's a big mouthful, but I'm gonna throw up the code um, on GitHub so you guys can poke around it yourself and see if you can make something work a lot better than mine does. It works fine, but I'm so sure there's things that can be optimized. To modify just so I'm gonna save that things and then inside we're of here. Over to uh, the first thing is that now our context has a new thing inside of it. Instead of just going into data.pagecontext.elementor data, we actually don't need to parse this JSON anymore because we've done that already. And then we can take this page context and just replace it with modified data. So that's the thing that we set up back here. And that's the, what we're going to be now looping over instead of the previous data. So this will have our rendered data inside of it. So just to make sure, let's save this and head over to our terminal. And let's rerun uh, Gatsby develop. And then I will pause the video and let it do its thing. All right, so that completed. Now we can go back to our uh, data here. Oh, we're console lagging it already. So we can just go back and we can refresh our page. And let's take a look at this data. Let's zoom in a little bit so we actually can see what we're looking at here. So we have our page context and now we have modified data all of a sudden. 
So we can take a look at this modified data and we can just open it up like we would open up um, just our regular Elementor data, get to elements, we've got our widget and we have our widget type of image. So we're gonna open that up, we'll go to settings and then we have our tag. So we didn't have this previously, but now we have it now. And now it's this giant blob of, of uh, image tag. It's got, you know, all the responsive stuff. It's got all the, the, uh, the ability, you know, it's got the source set. It's got WebP in here. It's got all the good things that we want. So now instead of just slapping that URL in here, like we were doing right here, we were just taking this guy and just throwing it into an image tag. We can be a lot more smart about it. And we can take our image.js and we can do something that might look like this. Let me just actually grab my cheat sheet here so I don't uh, mess it up. But we have uh, something that looks like this. We're taking in those settings just like we did before. And we're just dangerously setting the inner HTML. It sounds ominous, right? And we're taking that settings, the image, and then throwing the tag in there. So after all that, we can come back, we can refresh our page, and then we can open this up and take a look at the new hotness. So this is now what our once plain and simple image tag looks like. We now have this nice Gatsby loveliness. So our performance will now get much better, our page size will be much smaller, and it just loads crazy fast, like we, you know, like it never has before. So this is gonna be the conclusion of this part. We've taken our liberties with Gatsby on Create Node, and we have modified Elementor data and ran it through the plugin to output a better image. We then used React to and Gatsby image to kind of create an HTML string. And we took that HTML string and just threw it into our image component. Therefore, anytime that we throw a six megabyte image into our WordPress install, which we won't, but if we do, if we hand this off to somebody else and that's what they do, we're not gonna pay for that on the front end of our site. We're gonna have nice, quick, responsive images that are syntactically correct and are just gonna load super fast. So in the next video, we're gonna be jumping into even more fun stuff. We're gonna be talking about what the actual performances might look like and we're gonna be creating like our own blog posts. We're gonna actually be creating our very own page that's gonna look a lot more like a blog post than just two images side by side. So I'm excited about it and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.